So a few days ago, I flew to South Korea for my next semester of university. I'm actually currently in a government quarantine facility for two weeks. But this journey didn't start here. Flashback to one month ago in Berlin. It was final season at university, the worst and most stressful time of the whole term. I had five assignments due in two weeks, but to make matters worse, I found out at 10 p.m. one day that if I wanted a fast track visa to be processed for Seoul, I'd need to get all my documents to the Korean embassy by 10 a.m. the next day. This was an adventure. COVID test. Done. Made it through. I was listening to Taylor Swift's new album. I'm now gonna go print my passport photos, print a bunch of documents, and I've got one and a half hours until these visa documents are due. Ah! Oh my god, okay, so I got my documents printed, I got my negative COVID test, I got my photos printed. I have one hour to cycle all the way to the other side of Berlin, past Tiergarten, to the Korean embassy, to drop these off by 11am. I believe in myself, I can do it, but it's freezing and I'm so sleep deprived. I submitted my visa forms, yay! And then my plans for Christmas kind of changed too. My flight got cancelled, the borders shut, and instead of going home, it was a so Christmas of a lot of reading and virtual calls and pretending to be happier than I was. But hey, even though I feel like I haven't fully processed life still, it was time to get going. My visa got approved, I was super grateful for that. I packed my entire life away again in two suitcases. In true Jade fashion, I hardly made it in time to this check-in gate. Also had my first experience queuing in the non-EU line, which was not too fun. The Lufthansa staff were lovely. There was hardly anyone on the flights, so even though I was just a lowly economy light, I actually got to lie down on my seats, which was kind of nice. I had a cute vegan meal, I read my book. Here's me lying down, being like, whoa, I get to lie down on a plane for once, this is new. Here's me vibing to the somehow gorgeous lighting in the toilets. And just really trying to process the fact that I was leaving Berlin. Um, I really did not feel ready to do that. I still don't feel ready, here I am. So sunny. And I did much research into the whole COVID process in Seoul, but I still wasn't prepared for just how efficient it was. As soon as I landed, I downloaded this app called ID Corona. The airport staff were super lovely in guiding me in that. I filled out three different forms, two of which were health declaration forms. They took my temperature. I went through quite a few different queues where they sat down and kind of interviewed me, went through border control, and then I got my luggage. I transferred some money to Korean One. I had the address of my quarantine facility, so I navigated my way to the taxi service, found the shuttle taxi service going to my my area. All of this I did with hardly any Korean knowledge and they did not speak English, so that was interesting. And then attempted to find my assigned room, which was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Okay, so I just walked around the building, got up to the floor of my room number, and then found out that the room number didn't exist. And there's no sounds and there's no people. Okay, cool. I've got no Wi-Fi, no service. I think I could be in the wrong building, maybe. Let's try the building next door. Let's see if the number exists. <laughs> I was lugging my 30 kilogram bag. Hi! Oh! <laughs> this is so cute! Hi! Oh my god, hi! <laughs> This place is amazing. I feel like I'm in a dream still. It does not feel like I'm here, but this is very, very good. <laughs> However, I think I'm gonna melt. 
it feels like I'm in a tropical jungle. Like the air is so humid. The floor is like 30 degrees. And so the first thing I run to is the thermostat, which is set to 30 degrees. I can't get it to change. I change it, I decrease it, and then it just pops back to 30 and I don't know enough Korean to change it. I'm gonna do some hasty Korean translation right now. But while I'm here sweating like I'm in a jungle, let's give you a tour. My stuff is everywhere. This is incredible. All the students from my university who have arrived in the last three days are somewhere in this building. And the walls are so thin that I could literally hear them as I was coming up the stairs. It's so nice. Instantly you feel like you're in a community, even though I'm now on the other side of the world, which I still haven't really clocked. This is incredible. Literally every essential I could need. This is amazing. And this is my water for the whole stay, <laughs> which right now I might be drinking a lot of because it's so hot. And then you've got cute stuff. Let's put them on. Ah! <laughs> Slippers. This is so cool. Now when I first walked in the first thing that went through my head is it smells like roses <laughs> Because there's a rose diffuser This is amazing. This is like a hotel experience. This is like a massage parlor. I was concerned there wouldn't be Wi-Fi But there is there's Wi-Fi. I've, I've even got a fridge I've got absolutely nothing to put in it and I can't go buy anything, but fridge nonetheless. Right now I'm so hot I want to put my stuff in the fridge. It is so hot. How do I change this? Here we have an enormous cupboard, another enormous area of storage, and another enormous cupboard, a TV, so many plug sockets. They have the same plugs as in Germany, so all my adapters will work. Ah, a super comfy looking bed. beautiful and I brought my pillow just because you know a good pillow a good night's sleep you need that at university Ooh, very spacious I could live here and then as if that wasn't enough they have even got ah, a mini kitchen and a washing machine they don't even get a free washing machine at university let alone a washing machine that are they even given me some amazing washing liquid, thank you. I've got this so I can wash stuff up. Not that I've got any plates or bowls or cups or anything to wash up, but I can wash my hands. A whole full fairy liquid, Korean fairy liquid. Brand new sponge. But perhaps the best part of all for a Brit, a kettle. <laughs> Yay, I can make herbal tea. Despite my limiting packing space, you know I did bring tea bags. <laughs> And then a cute storage unit in here. And that's it. Welcome to my crib. This is my home for the next two weeks. Even the lighting isn't bad. White lighting. We stand. Let's see this window. Can you open it? Ooh. Ah! Are you ready for this view? Ah! It's it's just a random building. But this is definitely no random building in Germany or the UK anymore. Look at it! Look at it! Ah! <laughs> and so it begins. <laughs> I have truly not processed the fact that I am here. I started learning Korean in March. So I feel like I have a basic idea of how the language works. I can make all the hangul sounds. I kind of understand word order. I technically know things like present tense. But despite that, did I understand anything that they said at the airport apart from thank you and hello? Absolutely not. <laughs> this is not an easy language. <laughs> Although it's really cute, the taxi driver, um, it's, it's minus five right now, and the average temperature in Seoul in January is about minus seven. And even though I was wearing my coat and had three things wrapped around my waist because they didn't fit my suitcase, he was clearly indicating, like, aren't you cold? Like, this is minus five, why aren't you cold? And then I looked at him and I was like, but you're not wearing a coat. And there was this whole fun communication thing going on with neither of us understanding any of what we were saying language wise. I have never been on such an empty plane. I flew economy light. That's one step under economy. That's why they don't give you baggage included. And yet, because of the complete lack of passengers, I got to lie down in my seat and attempt to sleep for like seven hours. 
I'm so deeply impressed by how South Korea is handling the pandemic. They have streamlined the process so well to handle this and the, the whole experience, everyone was so kind. I think I waited in like six different queues. You'd be sat down with someone with a good barrier between you and they'd sit you down, they'd talk you through the app, you track any potential symptoms for the whole duration of quarantine. You have a lot of different rounds of COVID control and passport control. You get your temperature checked, which is kind of funny because one of my friends, because of her lack of luggage space, which I very much relate to, she wore like 10 different layers, you know, like jumper, jumper, coat, coat, coat. And so she was so hot that the, the temperature check said that she almost had a fever, like she was just too hot than average. So they made her wait six hours in the airport just to like check her temperature again, make sure, there, see if there were any other symptoms. So if you're traveling to Seoul, I recommend trying to keep your temperature at its normal. I'm living eight hours ahead of Berlin which means my entire concept of time and orientation right now is very off. But more than anything, I still don't feel like I've fully made peace with last semester. I love my university, I'm so grateful to be at this university, but I have a lot of critiques of the model and I think one of them I'm learning is how on earth can you spend just four months, one term in a place, and then uproot your life after all these connections you've made, move you to a whole other culture and just be like, do it, be fine with it. I'm almost grateful for this two week quarantine just to sit and process what last semester meant to me, especially because one day before my flight home for Christmas, you know, it was canceled. All my expectations changed. I didn't get to see my family. I didn't get to have that slow process, get myself back to where I want to be and then have a new adventure. I think I've had seven COVID tests so far throughout the last semester. I will be taken for a PCR test within the next three days at a facility and then taken back here and then they keep tracking me. I have to check into my app three times a day. I get given meals three times a day. Although, I've heard veganism isn't really a concept here. Like getting meatless stuff is really hard. The university spoke to this quarantine facility and managed to get us some vegan meals. But I've spoken to some of the students who are currently here and the people who got the vegetarian meal were given meat. And the people given the vegan meal for breakfast got an egg with rice. So I think I'm gonna be faced with this horrible choice. Do I wanna go really hungry or do I wanna be less vegan? I really don't want to do either. I don't want to eat meat. I really don't. I've not had meat since I was seven. I really, really don't want to eat meat. But we'll see. We'll see what comes of this. I have packed some snacks from Berlin. Also, it's a pure miracle that I have my whole life in that one suitcase and that one carry-on bag. I'm dreading unpacking it just because I don't want to repack it. <laughs> okay, wow. I'm in Korea. This is the first time I'm living alone in four months. And I like talking to people and I don't have any people. So thank you so much because you are my person. I don't know how I'm gonna use this, but I feel like I'm gonna try vlogging almost every day. Why not? I'll take you through what I get up to in this one room. Crazy, 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 crazy. I cried my eyes out on the plane. And I did this whole reflective thing where I went through all my photos. I wrote a journal entry. I listened to meaningful songs from Berlin. And so I think my casual magic is just listening to songs which are able to conjure memories of a specific time, a specific person, a specific place. Moments where I did dance workouts with my roommates, you know, the most random things. How cool is it that a song you just attach to something, like a memory? Pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna unpack. I'm gonna ration out my snacks because otherwise I will eat them all today. <laughs> I'm gonna edit a video. I'm gonna try and keep myself awake, call my family, and again, process the fact that I'm in South Korea. Just a quick update on the sauna. I really have been sitting here in my bralette because I'm just so hot. I did some research. I downloaded the app Translate King and it's cool because it's a photo app so I can just scan this little heat thermostat thing. And I think I've worked it out. I'm trying to work out because there's floor heating but there's also just the humid air, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to being cool again. <laughs> Here are the Berlin snacks that I must survive on. If you know me well, you know I don't go anywhere without oats. 
With boiling water, I can now make porridge if I want to. Which means I won't starve. Just because I love myself and I feel like I deserve it after the journey. I'm gonna open some dark chocolate pretzels. And I have my vitamins. Maybe I can just read a bit of Jack Edwards' book. I've got my pillow, which is, I don't know how on earth that fit in there, but it did. Oh, look at this, quarantine things. I was just watching the Red Velvet Oompa Oompa K-pop dance tutorial. May I add watching instead of doing it? Because I'm just so uncoordinated, my brain like, it first needs to see it to have any chance. <laughs> but look what just arrived, dinner! Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. This looks like cream. <laughs> Veganism, we love it. Uh, <gasps> Rice! Yeah. Oh, this looks like good sticky rice too. Ooh. Oh, and the centerpiece of the meal. Egg. <laughs> Wait, is it egg or is it tofu? Tofu would be amazing. I'm genuinely ashamed that I don't know what all these things are. Are these... Gherkins, maybe? And olives and sauerkraut? Oh, kimchi, kimchi jade, come on, kimchi. Yay, this is very exciting. And this is soup that probably has milk in it. No. I'm gonna eat my dinner in my new home, watching a documentary about Seoul. Extraordinary great. And a lot of that is to do with the fizzing energy, the frenetic pace of the economy. And People onto the world stage. Three, but an uneasy ceasefire carries on. Oh God. I don't know what it is, but I'm good. The deep. With Japan to its east and China. It's hosted. I don't really like all this. In the United no States, one, where we're on track to cut our deficit. It put his country at the top. And highlighted the difference. Uh, they weren't olives. They're weird eggs. No. No. What kind of animal egg is this? This is an egg. No, I don't want to eat egg. Ah. Mm. No. <laughs> oh. The rest of it's nice. My cute dinner mates. Bowing is a way to show respect and also it's a way to say hi and thank you. Elsie. Shower time. There she is. After pretty much finally figuring out the heat in here, which I was right was not as intuitive as just twisting it. I'm going to bed. I managed to stay up so hopefully I will sleep long and deeply. I just spent the last four hours reading about Seoul and about Korean culture and about South Korean history. I think I'll dig into that in tomorrow's vlog, but I am so fascinated by how this semester is going to be. I've never lived in a culture like this. This is so interesting and things like hierarchy and gender roles and power dynamics and all these things which as a foreigner I have a, a real duty to try and understand, be respectful within and, and just operate well in this culture. Yeah, aspects of the culture challenge my own culture, which is very interesting. But for now, I will sleep. <laughs> I also just quickly want to say, I am so proud of myself for getting here. I think this is the, the flight, the journey where I've 
truly felt chilled. Not because everything was going right, like no, it was, you know, it's different cultures, different languages, so much can go wrong, I got in the wrong building, I didn't have service, I didn't have Wi-Fi, I didn't know who to contact. But I just have this underlying knowledge now that, Jay, we got this, you can be self-sufficient, you're okay, even if things go wrong, you know, like, we'll work it out. As someone who didn't get a train to London by themselves until I was like 16 or 17, like, I just never got a train alone. Like, I'm in South Korea right now, on my own. <laughs> Pretty cool. I really miss my family, so it all just kind of feels like a dream and I just haven't really processed it because I'm just in this room. But yeah, we did okay. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>